Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Guile here, and welcome back to another Supreme Commander epic. It's going to be 6v6 action this afternoon uh, with basically all Joes today. There's no eclectic mix of anything, no pros to speak of. Those masters of mediocrity return once again to show us why it is they can't get a girlfriend. And uh, it's going down on a generated map. I know we've been having a lot of epics lately. There are two reasons. Firstly, it benefits me more because... I get more views. Uh, secondly, it's basically what's coming my way. It's what people are sending me, those longer casts. Uh, if you would like some more variation in the programming, do send me more. Send me some more 1v1 ladders, be they your games or interesting ones you've run across in the vault. I'm not picky either way. If you are not going to send me one, but you would still like some alternative content nonetheless, do check out the Patreon. We have all sorts of different types of casts over there, as well as epics as well, if you do prefer the longer ones. We have 80 casts on there, and it's a mere dollar a month. Details in the link in the description below this video. All right, that's enough of that. Let's give these guys some time, allow our players to gate in, and we will make our all important introductions. This will be Team 1 up here at the top of your screen, and this will be Team 2 down here at the bottom. Go first for Team 1 on the left hand side in Burgundy Red. It's Latrot going UEF, a terribly sensible opening first land. Team member number 2 for Team 1 above him to the slight northeast. It's Igrek, or Igrek, we'll call him Igrek, going Cyber and Bless him in Lurid Green opening first land. Team member number three down here. It's sort of a zigzag pattern across the top and the bottom for these player distribution. Uh, it's another Cybrin, this time in mellow yellow. It's Ned Bark. There he is. I suppose that's a reference to Game of Thrones, but instead of Stark, for copyright reasons, of course, it's Ned Bark. There he is, bless him. Opening first land. Team member number four, next up in Hattie Borange Orange, again to the northeast. It's another Cybrin. It's Monkey Mole, and he's going first land. After him, team member number five, sporting the season's fabulous, vivacious Violet, and going at UEF, it's Les Niaok. Uh, okay, we'll call him Les today, because why not? That's an absolute nightmare, that name. And he's gone first land. And last but not least, over here in Dijon Yellow, we've got Zardoz. Zardoz. I haven't seen Zardoz for ages. This is a long-running Joe. Uh, <laughs> it always makes me think of Zardoz. The film spelt differently. I have made this uh, representation to you before, or I've mentioned it, and many of you who I said go off and type Zardoz into YouTube were surprised to see the extraordinary trailer of the film Sean Connery should never have made. Basically, he's sporting a uh, prototype to Borat's Mankini. Do go and check it out. All right, that's Team 1 featuring a mix of about three Cybrins, two UEF there, and an Aeon. Forgot to say, actually, Zardoz is going Aeon, of course, opening first air. Let's slowly uh, time up just a little bit so we can make our introductions on Team 2 now. We'll start over here on the right, having already left his base. Our first serve of the day in Baby Blue. It is Ads 3000. Off he goes in slow fashion, of course, because I've just scaled back the time on towards the middle. And uh, he opened first land. No surprises there. Team member number two in Electric Blue this time. Going Cybrin. It's Super Admin. And he's gone first land. Team member number three over towards the center in Pontiff White. We have Snaconic. And he's also going Seraphim. And he went first land. Team member number four in Cyanide Cyan. Sticking in his base for now. It's Minigar going Cybrin. Opening first land. Team member number five up over here in a Fecal Brand. I almost said Halle Borange Orange because of the uh, setting. The beige setting made it look orange to me, but it's not. That is, of course, Fecal Brown. How could we not notice the all-important Fecal Brown? Not seeing so many players pick that these days. wonder why. Reason's completely beyond me. Anyway, there he is. It's a Freedom Cobra going Aeon, going first land and second air up there on a nice little distance build up on that little plateau. And last but not least, over here at the western edges of the screen, we've got Dwayne, and he's going Cybrin and Ferrari Red opening first land. So there we have it, racial makeup of Team 2. What have we got? We've got three Cybrin again, two Seraphim, and an Aeon. So there we have it. Game quality at 93%. That's acceptable. We won't quibble too much. The averages in Team Rating are 1017 to 1050. Players of note or people to watch out for on team 
one. We've got Zardoz over here on the right. 1,200 top rated player. Lowest rated player is Les to his left. So getting a bit of protection there. Nestled in around potentially slightly more competent players. What's the state of play for Team 2? Dwayne down here on the opposite side of the screen to Zardoz. He is rocking a very respectable 1,300 today. Super admin in electric blue down here. He's a 900 and at 600, short stacking everybody, but nestled in next to Dwayne for some cozy coverage. There is uh, Freedom Cobra at 600. So there we have it. As with always, guys, treat the global rankings with a pinch of salt. What has the map gen given us today? Uh, some decent quantities of reclaim scattered about the map. Nothing too outlandish or too outrageous. But if you can scroll right out, you've got some little mass fields there. 500, 200, just around the plateau cliffs and what have you dotted about. The mass extractor or mass point situation it's uh, clumped up in these nice little areas. So these are really important tactical areas to hold as you've got clumps of three mass extractors, almost like mini starting locations in their own right, just sort of a strewn about the map in certain situations, certain places. There you have it. And the plateaus themselves, two very large, completely isolated and sealed off plateaus in the center, one on each side, and then some mini ones kind of dotted around, all which are inaccessible. If you want to get up there, you're going to have to distance build a factory or make a drop. And then you have these other formations, which could serve for some decent defensive pl uh, places, like this little one here. It's completely sealed off, except, I suppose, can you climb up there? Well, actually, no, that might be a little bit of a uh, optical illusion. But uh, it looks like it's completely sealed off from the front. The only way to get onto this section here is through the back entrances. Always risky, as you guys well know. Right, I feel like that's enough explanation of our players, our teams, and our map. Let's give the players the time they need and see who is making what moves in the early phases as we, as we approach five minutes into the game. Gun upgrade on the way for Ned Bark. About 8% done there, nothing too showy. What have we got up front for Latrot? He has just made his way forward. Throw down a T1 PD, and then he's going to get a T2 engineering suite upgrade going. Dwayne not looking like he's pushing too hard right off the bat. To be honest, the uh, amount of mass available to these Joes early doors is not so extraordinary high in terms of reclaim and what have you. I probably didn't need to slow down the game at all to make the introductions it's going to be a little while a little warm-up period while these guys get going one snoop remaining making his way through the territory there of super admin his buddies got massacred on the way in but that little combat scout of two dps not too much of a threat so we've got three consecutive or concurrent rather than consecutive actually concurrent Upgrades going on all at the same time. That gun upgrade for Ned Bark. We've got the T2 Engineering Suite. Now we've got another gun upgrade going for Dwayne, although he's paused that for now. What else is he working on currently? That is uh, requiring more attention. Well, it is core mass upgrades. You can understand why. Maybe he started that gun upgrade just a little bit early. You can always pause them, and uh, incidentally, you don't need to carry on with the comm itself, you can just bring in engineers, keep the actual upgrade paused, but continue to progress it by assisting it with engineers. That may where you can regulate the amount of resources that are funneled towards it. That's a nice little tip for any newbies starting. Sniconic right in the center with his commander now. Not too far away from Ned and Monkey Mole. Couldn't find himself in a little bit of a... 2v1 situation if he doesn't drop back he has got an air scout circling the field so he'll be well aware of the potential danger might not have been so aware that Ned Barker completed a gun upgrade might make him think twice about advancing too much further forward Snaconic already having shed now some 2000 to 3000 HP 
but has a nice little group of fans rolling in to provide some relief. Snogonic himself down below 7,000 hit points now as a wave of Mantis for Ned march on up, but then drop back. They don't want to throw away any needless kills to their opponent. Gun upgrade for the Zardoz, progressing very quickly indeed, up to 85%. That's actually his second gun upgrade. You can see he's got one complete already, so that's a fully functioning Aeon Sniper Com. Cock locked and ready to rock, as they say. I don't know who says that. I've never heard anyone say that. But they say people say it, so I'll go with it. Adds working on a T2 upgrade, looking to lock down this side of the map with some point defense if he gets the opportunity. It is progressing in good order. He's up to 75% complete. Zardoz on the move with his Aeon Sniper Com, but that will be long since completed by the time he gets there. Adds immediately gets to work on a point defense the moment that has completed. Engineers come in to assist it. Can he get enough defenses online before Zardoz wrecks this entire area with that commander? He'll have the bonus range, of course, from that gun upgrade. Might make himself a little bit of a nuisance. And Snaconic dropped back to get himself a T2 upgrade. That will restore a healthy chunk of hit points, of course, when that completes. Didn't drop back too far, but he's got more than enough support in the form of T1 tanks and artillery to keep Ned Bark at bay. Might lose a few units in the process. With that upgrade going to complete. Checking in over on the east side. Zardoz did march forward. Ad's got two units of T2 point defense online by the time Zardoz made his attack. Zardoz is going to bag one of those, but take an awful lot of damage in the process, down to about 4,700 to 4,800 HP before he backs off. How are we looking on the eco side of things? It's 274 mass per tick versus 250 for Team one, 2 versus Team 1. So Team 2 there ahead. It is uh, 92k versus 87k in favor of Team 2 in terms of total mass. On the reclaim side of things, Team 2 ahead there as well. 9.4 versus 7.6k. And uh, kill-loss ratios almost meaningless at this stage in the game. 0.5 and 0.6 respectively in favour of Team 1. Dwayne with stealth and a gun upgrade on board that commander. Posturing against Latrot, who's got himself a shiny little shield gen going here. Three units of T2 point defense and a unit of T1 sitting almost universally beneath that shield. That triad just poking out the edge there. More than enough, though, to dissuade a cybering commander from getting any silly ideas. Freedom Cobra brings his comm up, and he's gone double A on sniper comm as well. So, potentially some decent firepower in the field on his way towards the midpoint. Ned Bark took a lot of damage in the last encounter, still hasn't repaired himself. He's on about 4,600 hit points. Doesn't want to get that comm exposed to any unnecessary damage. And this really has taken its time to get going here which is interesting because I know it's an average Joe's but there's 12 players on the field here no one going hell for leather just as yet Ned Bark advancing forward taking some fire for his trouble that looked like the uh, most costly T1 tank reclaim operation <laughs> I've ever seen does get himself out of some trouble. Wanders back to base. 
spiky tail between his legs. Little run by though from some of Ned's units making it in towards the main base of Cobra but not enough units really to pose any threat. Cobra is going to head those off as they bottleneck into this canyon just to the east of Cobra's base. Zardoz and Ads getting into it in a big way over in the east and Ads drawing some mercy fire down to about 6,000 HP. He's also got a Spectre gunship issue as those three gunships hover above him. He's got a lot of engineers with him though and they are spamming up some T1 anti-air coverage. Ads dearly, dearly needs as much of that as possible. Into the red, 3,200 hit points. Just enough to keep him alive. Zardoz pushed back to his base, but looking considerably more healthy than his opponent on a much more respectable 8,000 HP. Looking a little bit light on the ground in terms of T1 support, considering there's a double push going here. We've got tanks coming in from both Super Admin and Ads. This forward position for Zardoz might prove untenable. He's certainly dropping back with his commander. Doesn't want to find himself surrounded by a whole horde of Thams, or Mantis for that matter. Double gun upgrade or no, that's still a bad position to be in. Like to hang on to it if he can. Taking a lot of fire now. More troops coming in around the side of his factories. Zardor's down to about 50% of his base health. He's losing all of those forward factories. There goes the last one, the air factory. He's brought in one Spectre as interceptors and air superiority fighters tangle above his comm. Who do the ASFs belong to? Well, they belong to Minigar down here. See, so first to hit T3 air. He's seemingly the first to have any on the field. And speaking of his T3 air, early strap bomber out, which is always an excellent play, going straight for Neg Barks. Forward base bombs away. Lovely positioning, taking out tons and tons of infrastructure and engineers. Two mass extractors down. Radar, about three engineers. What a perfect first bombing run that was. And he follows it up with another beauty. This time, slap bang in the middle of Monkey Mole's base. And another two core mass down this time. Perfect placement. How many kills? Oh, he did get another bomb off, taking down another T2 mechs out to the east. I unfortunately didn't get to see how many kills he was on before he got shot down, but I think that definitely paid for itself. There's a second strap bomber out, though, from Minigar, making its way northbound. He's going to be the lucky benefactor of this shiny new Revenant. Interesting that stealth has not been activated. Perhaps he lacks the power. Meandering its way up towards Ned Bark once again. Is he going for the comm or is he going for this mass point which is funding or was funding those four factories but that one single bomb taking out all of them they must have been T1 factories to go up with that T2 mechs otherwise they wouldn't have crumbled so lightly. The Revenant does get shot down ultimately but still lovely harassment work here from Minigar. Zardoz has dropped back just a little bit, set himself up with a new firebase. Just a smidge back in the canyon between these two plateaus. Ads has moved up, got himself a new shield gen. And a nice little reclaim, mass reclaim field. Worth about... Uh, Two and a half K mass, not to be sniffed at. Sneck with a uh, 
T2 artillery installation, which is just lazily lobbing its ordnance in towards Ned Bark's forward outpost. An outpost that he's abandoned with his comm now because, frankly, it's far too dangerous up front. Team 1 on the back foot here. Team 2 pressing on multiple fronts in the centre, although lightly with some standoff tactics in the centre, but the flanks are being pushed pretty darn hard. The trot, though, holding gloriously in true UEF turtle fashion. Getting a second shield gen up with tons of buzz kills, because you need tons of buzz kills, ineffectual as they are. And a nice little ground push with some T1 strikers just pushing those Viper missile launchers back, buying himself a bit of breathing room, some time for that shield gen to replenish. So Latrot managing nicely on that western flank. Over to the east, Zardoz under pressure once again. Adds, who has now got the nano repair upgrade on board that Seraphim commander, is fully repaired after his last encounter. And using that comm and its very beefy 17,000 hit points and upgraded gun to terrorize. Zardoz's position. Zardoz drops back, loses another shield gen. He still has the rear shield gen, but it's not going to last long. Last T2 point defense about to go down. We've got Ilshivers rolling up as well. Zardoz definitely needs a hand from the middle players. He's getting some assistance. Nice wave of T1 bombers inbound from Igrek. Adds drops into the yellow at about 13k HP. Looks like that attack will peter out for now at least. Nice pushback here from Latrot. Little handful of mongoose rolling up, scaring off the vipers and completely blitzing their way through this forward position, which actually had a couple of Gunthers to its name. Probably the reason for this little attack and its timing no way to counter with more turtleage you just got to take those artillery pieces out which he has done and done nicely I mean I suppose you could argue the shield gens are the counters of course to bombardment but uh, no way to neutralize them without counter bombardment which he didn't have I don't think or maybe he did have some artillery pieces he did have he's got a lovely little clink hammer battery but rather than wait for those to overpower the position utilize them to soften it up and then just steamed forward with a whole bunch of T2 got himself some more breathing room Dwayne pulled his comm all the way back to his main base some time ago Definitely not worth fighting for that. And some nice walling off going here from Latrot. He's sealed off two canyons now on this approach. But he control K's just a little smidge in the center, perhaps to let this force pass through it. And now he's got another engineer building a new wall right behind it. <laughs> they can just go around our very great wall of chinery around it at low tide it's fine dragonfly making its way up the eastern edge of the map there for super admin and a t3 upgrade on the way for Sneck. I think he only just started he's got some time before that completes trying to build himself a uh, heavy shield generator at the same time Nice little attack through the center from the trot, but running straight into a handful of Bernies. Is that the first ground-based T3 we've seen so far? I think it might be. Mongoose. Well and truly outmatched by the arrival of 
America's favourite socialist. Have I got that right? Other people prefer AOC and her bottom. Nice little bit of defensive work there by Monkey Mole. Chasing down some of Ad's air units as they fly over the top of Zardoz's forward base. Seraphim mobile missile launchers out in force there from Ad's. Just unrelenting pressure being brought to bear against Zardoz. And they struggle as all missile launchers and mobile missile launchers struggle against the Aeon tactical missile defense. Ooh, artillery though. That's always difficult to keep out. Where did that even come from? There it is. The artillery piece. Mentioned that before, I'm sure. So Dwayne, after that little clear-out operation on the canyon floor, redirected back up onto the plateau just to make sure that the trot hadn't gotten any ideas of setting up shop there on that plateau. Sensible decision. That is quite a decent number of Corsairs inbound for Igrek. Haven't heard an awful lot from him. Oh, goodness me. Look at this. Hardly anything's happened. We've already got a tele -maser on the way. 42% complete there. But these Corsairs seem to be inbound to Dwayne. Dwayne who is pretty light on flak. Has one shield gen partially upgraded. Covering his commander. That's not going to save him. That's not going to save him. God he had firepower left over there I'm pretty sure. We did have a nice wave of fighters brought in for Minigar, but it wasn't enough to save him. Perhaps if they were led just a bit further forward, perhaps they haven't got a really good, solid intel. Ah, well, they're seeing some up here. But that's probably because... Actually, I don't know what is... What is picking up that signature... It's full. It's, we've got full Intel coverage, so there it was, me thinking there was a logical excuse why Minigar didn't see that. Perhaps he was just focused on other things. That certainly could have knocked out enough of those Corsairs to save his teammate, but uh, he benefits nonetheless, has uh, repatriated his stuff over in the West. He's now in control of it, so Minigar... Expected to be chip leader in terms of mass. There he is, 310 mass per tick. In terms of team mass production, Team 2 ahead by about 100, 150 mass there or thereabouts. Les with his com pretty far forward. He's got T2 engineering suite and his engineering drones. There's a nice little firebase which he's desperate to hang on to. It's now drawing some cliff based missile fire though from the east to uh, adds. And he's also got a large incursion coming on the valley floor. Units penetrating the shield coverage. Down goes the forward shield. Les anchored where he is on an upgrade. Can't go anywhere, although it's nearly done. Is it nearly done? It seems to be repeating over and over again. T3 it was. Cancelled. So uh, we were getting the second bar, of course, because he had rover drones. So maybe that was working on projects, which was confusing the issue here. But he's not out of the danger zone. Still getting pressed by this group of Ilshivas. The final shield fails. Down goes the shield structures. 
Now Les drawing fire on his comm, his badly damaged comm at that. Sub 3,500 hit points now. Is he going to get out of this one? It would take a miracle. Or maybe it won't. Number of Ilshivers has fallen off a cliff. Les very close to a rank in veterancy, and with that overcharge, he gets it back up into the yellow. I was sure I was expecting some kind of bombing run, a wave of T1 bombers or a mercy snipe or something to come in and finish him off. Les rolling back out the northeastern exit. It's going to blap a few of these mobile missile launchers on the way. That have ill fatedly made their way onto the canyon floor. There was no need for that. They could have stayed happily on the side, but I guess they were just uh, had their attack orders and made their own way there. So that little attack peters out, although there are a couple more units lurking around. This base isn't safe yet. And there's determined maintain his presence here. He's moving forward with his commander. Going to throw down a triad right behind this forward outpost. Might be able to re-secure this canyon floor. But certainly not a given and I would be very, very concerned about loitering anywhere too far forward with a partially damaged commander at this stage of the game. Easy pickings for a bomber rush of some description. And we have our first experimental, I believe it was Minigar. Where was it produced? Okay, it was produced at Dwayne's old base way out west. It's a monkey lord, no surprises there. Cheap and cheerful, but does plenty of damage. And on its way up now towards... Latrot's forward base. What has he got in the way of defences? Well, nothing that's going to stop a monkey lord, I humbly suggest. No ravagers or anything like that. Large ASF battle, northeast of mid. Looks like it might be going Team 2's way. Maybe I spoke too soon. No, definitely didn't. That is a comfortable, comfortable win for Team 2. Minigar and Super Admin firmly in control of the air game for the time being. And having completed the laser some time ago, Igrek now working on a teleporter. 70% there, done there, so we're going to have some cybrony shenanigans underway before too long, I believe. Or well, certainly the ability for it. Oh, and look at what we have there. Les did get taken out. What did he get taken out by? That looked like a Corsair tumbling out of the sky at the end there. Answers in the comment section if you caught that one. Apologies, I didn't. But uh, there we have it. Probably would have been sensible just to leave that position. Having completed the teleporter upgrade, Igrek goes straight for the T2 engineering suite to give himself a little bit more HP. And now he is a dangerous tool. <laughs> In the nicest possible sense. A dangerous tool, i.e. a weapon. Not a tool as in um, something else. Uh, Igrek. Preparing to fling himself at somebody on Team 2, I'm sure. But with the demise of Les, it is now a 5v5. The game is leveled, with the exception of mass income 1.6k to 1.4k. Nice little bit of pressure being brought to bear against the trot over in the west by Sneck, getting hung up on his great wall in the canyon. Got a few units through it. 
then decided against going straight in there. Nice little push out to the west. The Monkey Lord didn't actually manage to dispatch that forward fire base. Why? Because the trot trotted out a Monkey Lord of his own. Probably wants to keep it around. Maybe to help with defence of this forward position. And another Monkey Lord inbound, this time against Snek's forward outpost. That is a massive artillery installation. One, two, three, four, five, six. At least. Artillery emplacements about to go bye-byes. As a Monkey Lord and a couple of handfuls of bricks roll on through it. We've also got Experimentals way out east. Another Monkey Lord and a GC this time out from Zardoz. And this has got to feel good. Pushing his way back across this plateau and forcing Ads' his ground forces into retreat. Major counter pressure across the board now from Team One, who's been on the back foot for some time in this game. Team Two still just about ahead in eco. It's about 1.5k to 1.5k, more or less equal. Monkey Lord in the center for Ned finally runs out of juice. some restorers in to supplement these experimentals in the east give them a little bit of air coverage they're going to get walloped by a pack of air superiority fighters from super admin and we are now well and truly into the late game phase we've got experimentals popping up all over Starting to see strategic missile defense employed, which is always a good sign. Not a guarantee in average Joe's games, believe you me. Chicken and a Monkey Lord versus a Monkey Lord and a GC. But the Monkey Lord for Zardoz is critically damaged. It's just going to last no time at all. Down he goes. Chicken probably going to lose the battle with the GC, but the Monkey Lord might be the game changer in that little encounter. Chicken trying to make his way around the cliff edge or the hillock for some coverage. Doesn't manage to survive, but the Monkey Lord for Super Admin will finish off the GC nicely. Much reclaim needs secure. Yes, indeedy. Some big numbers down there. 53,700 mass, to be precise. Going to be tough for anybody on Team 1 to secure that, that's for sure. Mass income now level pegging. We're checking out the kill-loss ratio. Team 2 certainly have fared better on that front. 1.06 to 0 0.85. And Team 2 have done better in terms of total mass accrued throughout the game at 1.64 million versus 1.44. Reclaim figures drift in that direction also. 8k up in favour of Team 2. Wave of spy planes out from Igrek. No doubt looking for his first victim. He's up here. Telemazer ready to go of course. Poor soul is going to feel the wrath of the green cybernage. ACU, says Les. So, Snek out and about for a walk and away from anything defensive. No T1 PD around his com to speak of that would prevent a tele snipe what do we got down here we've got a lot of erupted t1 point defense down here for freedom cobra a 
Minigar in his main base. Another big old bank of Tech 1 point defence, but uh, it's not particularly close to the comm. Positioning in over here with an entry point could be successful. In fact, Freedom Cobra, building more strategic missile defence, has moved away from his T1 point defence, so he's now vulnerable. Lots of T2 point defence defending super admin he is definitely out and similar situation on t1 point defense there for ads where are you going he's going where's he going he's gone down here for freedom he knew it was coming freedom drifted away from his t1 point defense bad times my friends that's the problem when you've got a T3 engineering suite and you want to utilize your commander's build capacity. You drift away to a strategic location to build some SMD. In comes some transports trying to pile on damage, but Igrek is long since evac'd. Not really long since, but uh, they were gonna they were never gonna punch through the comms armor, that was for sure. Iogrek safely home, one com kill to his name, and now Minigar handling everything for the bottom left quadrant, the quadrant there for Team 2. And now we have a teleporter on the way for Minigar, who says two can play at that game, Sunshine. He's already got the laser on board. Are we entering a phase of the game where player numbers are going to start to rapidly decrease? Huge contingent of Othams, as well as a chicken, does punch a hole in the front line of Ned Bark. That doesn't go any further. The Othams are going to drop back, and now we're going to see some utilization of the air advantage. Interesting, they didn't provoke the fight first of all. It's a great way to get your donut shot down, that's for sure. Taking huge damage. Oh, no. Yeah, should have had the air fight first and cleared the way. That would have done quite the large, significant amount of damage over here. Might even have bagged Ned's com and wiped out the entire base. But alas, it wasn't to happen. T3 flak over in the east. Certainly do with it, that's for sure. Hi, Grek. Ooh. So, spy plane out to the top left. Does that mean Minigar's completed? Minigar down here. Wow, okay, why is he down here? So, he must have... And he's taken some damage, so he's teleported somewhere already. I'm seeing a footprint of a building there. Where is he going now? He's teleported again. Oh, he's teleported just back into his main base. What are you doing, sir? What is the plan here exactly? But we have Scathis under construction. Minigar. Ooh, well this could be a problem. He is now going to be very much trapped into this. You can see him working on shield coverage because he's got T3 artillery raining down upon him from... Where exactly? It looked like it was coming out from this side of things. There it is. Right there. Eyes open, Guile. Big fat duke. And it's lobbing its ordnance in towards Minigar. I don't dislike that play, that target choice. He's the biggest threat right now. I don't know if they knew he had just started work on Ascathis. But he is going to take a pummeling. And not in a good way. More 
or shield gens desperately being deployed around that Scathis. I mean, he's barely started it. Personally, I would be pausing construction of that, focusing on base defense. Lovely little push by ads, though. We've got some real seesaw action over here in the east between ads and Zardoz. Zardoz now facing inbound Otham and chicken pressure. Got a solid little firebase up here. Oh dear, and there's also a megalith, albeit a badly damaged one, moving up behind them. This could be problematic for Zardoz. Don't see him holding this back. And speaking of south to north pushes, we've got another one going on on the western flank. Helpfully coming in in a very narrow column, though. The Canyon Floor Army is going to get held up on that wall section. And another push coming up through the middle. Minigar amassed a huge force here. Novak Satellite out from the trot heading down towards Minigar who is still under Duke pressure factories pgens shields all getting periodically pummeled and now they're going to have a Novak satellite to worry about on top of it I am skeptical that this Scathis is going to get completed with the amount of firepower in the Duke raining down on it and the Novaks. Shields capitulating up front for Latrot Zardoz. Situation critical as the chicken breaches the main base. He has to bring his com forward to engage it personally. He's got double gun and personal shield. Taking fire now. Can he kill it off? He needs some overcharges. He's got a nice group of renegade gunships. Adding in the damage. But no. <laughs> Zardoz doesn't make it out. Oh, and look at this. Igrek going into the backfield against Minigar. Massacring a lot of shield gens, but Minigar... Going out com to com. And he, of course, has the laser. Igrek gets the laser on him first. Oh, my goodness. <gasps> How? He didn't open fire at all, but he nearly dies. He's down to about 2,400 hit points. The shields pop up, and now Igrek is taking point defense fire from the main base. And he could be about to go down. Sub 2,000 hit points now, and a wave of Corsairs in from Super Admin to finish the job. That was almost brilliant. And in the end, awful. <laughs> oh, carnage. Well, it was nearly awful from Minigar saying, I've got more hit points than you and I've got the laser rolling out. But his laser just didn't fire. And you don't have a lot of time to negotiate these things. Frankly, I'm amazed he got out of there. But he's not out of this yet. He's only got 2,700 hit points left on the commander. And it's inbound artillery fire and, of course, that pesky Novak satellite circling overhead. Super admins brought in a support commander to help with construction of the Scathis. But look at the problem in the northeast. So the flanks, two different tails. The western base for Team 1 for La Trot, that held. The eastern base... Poor old Zardoz and their star player, incidentally, did not. So it's both star players down for both teams. 1300 Dwayne went early doors with that fighter bomber snipe. And now Zardoz just a moment ago in hand-to-hand -hand combat almost with a chicken. It was properly up close and personal. extractors going pop the last of Zardoz's 
resourcing options in that top right hand corner. Monkey Mole doing his best to secure the position from the skies. He has a decent amount of air superiority fighters, it has to be said. Scath is somehow still alive. I suppose it was only one Duke. He's got a decent amount of build capacity under here. He's managed to spam up a lot of shields. That's not healthy, though. Definitely doesn't want to lose his power grid. How much power has he got? Not about oh he's got plenty of redundancy there. We'll lose another reactor that might take out another two shields. Big old air battle brewing in the east, and it's almost looking like parity right now in terms of ASF numbers. Monkey Mole's done a nice job of fighting back with air production. I just wonder if flipping stealth mode on on these fighters might swing it one way or the other. But the decision was not undertaken either side in the end. Wave of uh, Corsairs in from Super Admin trying to contain this Megalith which is looking pretty healthy as it strolls forward and starts firing those massive twin mounted photon cannons. Photon or no? Proton cannons. Not lasers, Guile. royal mess of experimentals in the center. Oh, Monkey Mole picked off at the top of the screen. That must have been Minigar. Was it Minigar? Yeah, Minigar. Telly sniped in at the top of the screen. And why did he do that? Because he lost his Scathis. Out he went. He went straight for the jugular. Straight for the com kill. Staying mobile, staying saucy. But he's waiting before giving us any more treats. So it's now a 2v4 in favour of Team 2. And Team 2 up massively in eco. 3.1k to 1.6k. Not sure how much of that is reclaim related. If that's legit income, that's an existential threat for Team 1. They'll never be able to match up to that. But how the main base of Minigar. I can see why he lashed out with a tele snipe. And he's gone again, but he, this time he's gone right into the backfield. And he's moving again. He took out a power plant. Where's he gone to? I can't keep track of him. Went right the way down to the bottom right. He's just zipping all over the place right now. Didn't quite get the chain reaction I'm sure he thought he was going to get. He managed to badly damage two more reactors. He took out two neighboring air factories. Kill other bases with Artie, says Ned Bark. Minigar, is he sated for now? Or has he got any more surprises in store for us on the tele snipe front? I think he might well be done for now. No back, says Les. He's certainly withdrawing them, taking that advice. No, he's going again. Where is he off to? He's gone central base there of Ned Bark. Very dangerous. Nearly got Ned. He has got Ned, but he has traded his own life for him. How much damage was inflicted on the base? The comms don't cause damage like they used to. And 
now it is Latrot all by his lonesome versus Super Admin. Sneck handling all of Minigar's old stuff, the entire southwest quadrant, and adds. Another attack out in the west. Pretty sizable force. Harbingers. The odd brick or two. The odd loyalist. And a megalith. Megalith needs to keep moving though. There are banks of ravagers further back. This is some first class turtling in the west. To be honest, it's where he's strongest because that's where he's been fortifying all game. Forces would actually be better spent pushing up in this direction. We have got forward movement in the east. Adds moving through the canyon that he spent so much time with Zardoz fighting over. Now he's got support commanders up front spamming up anti-air defense. Probably worth going full base mode up here and using it as a launch pad to expand out further. We now have... That's a lot of artillery. So he didn't stop with just one. He went for three dukes in the end. Working on a Mavor. That Mavor about a third done. What have we got over here? Hello! Yolana Oss. Under production and not just under production but half done. Now the race begins between the Mavor and the Yolana Oss. Either side would be a huge advantage. Latrop really needs this. Can he funnel enough resources into it though? Sneck, who's building the Lona Oss, is pulling in 1.3k by himself. Latrot is pulling in 1.5k on the entirety of Team 1's infrastructure, or what's left of it that he has access to. That's a very large group of experimentals in the middle. The trouble with this, though, at this stage... Even when you have large numbers, if the Yolana Os can finish, that becomes the perfect defensive measure, the perfect weapon against large ground force armies. Revenants on the move. Their own ASF air wing. Attack pings going down. There is Snex Com. 37,000 hit points to chew through on that commander. And then of course there's the shield gen on top of it. Here they go. Strap bombs away. They're targeting the commander. It looked like he was going to try and pick up his com, com on board that transport. And he is going to try that. This is very risky indeed. Where's the ASFs? They're just back here. Oh, the bomb lands just as the transport's taking off. Transport down to half health. Can he get the comm on the ground? The ASFs are inbound. <laughs> Unbelievable. He picks his comm up and drops him in the next canyon away from the inbound crab army. What a miraculous play that was by Sneck. A little bit lucky too, but we won't talk about that. What is luck, except for exceptional timing? Mass Fab Farms going up in smoke, putting a huge dent in Sneck's income. He's lost about 400 mass in the last couple of minutes with this push just through the central canyon here. Those Mass Fab Farms were contributing a lot to his eco. How far done are we on the Yolana Os? Well, it's ready and it's firing its first nuke. Strategic launch detected. 
Where is that going? Is that that's a defensive nuke? I mean that base is more or less done. He should have probably placed it about there. Didn't want to hurt his own megalith. That is definitely a dead megalith. It's going to badly damage some others. There it goes. The others are largely untouched by it. He's going to need to fire a lot closer to home with the next one, but it's almost ready. go. Up, up and away. No SpaceX launch failures for this chappy. Fully functional and dangerous and very close to home indeed. It's going to literally land on the head of one very badly damaged crab. Look at that! Perfect placement. And will it bag the other two? It takes a while for those secondary rings, those explosions to hit. Look at the damage. No problem. And suddenly, Latrot finds himself down to just one crab. Mavor very nearly done. I expect that to be honed in on the Yolana Os. There we go. 8,000 hit points. Construction complete. Launch detected. And the next missile is going straight for Latrot's base and the Mavor and his comm. Member of Doom. Look how mighty. Splendid. Certainly looks like it's firing in the right direction. I would imagine he's got sufficient nuke defense to deal with this inbound nuke. Got a couple of SMDs in it. There's two just in that one alone. And there's six missiles loaded in that anti-nuke silo. So he can tank a couple of these at least. Wouldn't be surprised if he's not building more elsewhere. He'll know he needs some. There's also an SMD with two in the clip. Just slightly further to the southeast. In fact, that missile must have been shot down by that one on the way past. Nice little run-by maneuver now as bricks push their way in. Strategic launch detected. Through the center. Need to carry on moving, though. They're going to get caught by these inbound crabs coming up from the south. Look at the damage that has been inflicted down here, though, by these Dukes. Dukes still focusing on these down here. It's not going straight after the Ilona Os. In fact, is the Mavor even going after the Ilona Os? I don't think the Dukes can reach. Can the Dukes reach? Dukes can't quite reach the Ilona Os down here. And you can see it hasn't even been scouted, so he doesn't know where the threat is. So that's why the Mavor will not currently be targeting it. Instead, it's going after Ads's forward, or his main base, I suppose. Yeah, his main base. Both his comm and Snex's comm in residence. Lots of build capacity spamming up shields as fast as humanly possible. Strategic launch detected. But yeah, he needs to do a flyby or something with some spy planes. I suppose he has got his attention on the situation in the top right, so Ads has pushed his way up to the northeast corner. He's got some support commanders on a transport. They should probably be offloaded so he can set up shop properly, but he's got a nice little spam factory setup going on here, all of which have been upgraded to T3. Some are pumping out Zooey's for extra damage, extra suicide ability, and some pumping out Othams. The Trot, meanwhile, trying to contain this inbound spam with his strap bombers. Strategic launch detected. But the nukes just keep on coming, and he's got to do something about it. It's not just the Yolana Os. We've also got inbound regular nukes from Super Admin's base just over here to the east of the Yolana Os. The 
this is a very tall order for Latrot now, whose sphere of influence, operational radius is diminishing as time goes on. He has lost complete access to the top right hand corner. Transport brought those support commanders forward. These are Rambo preset support commanders. So able to fight very comprehensively on the front line whilst also able to set up shop of a new base at any time. Eesh, this is looking ugly. You need some gunships or strats ready to sort these support commanders out. He loses all of those mass fabs, T3 mechs. Latrot now down to 1.1k. Team 2 collectively still pulling in about 1.6. He dispatched his Novak satellite. Is he taking care of Super Admin's nuke? I think he might have done, you know. There is... Uh... Yeah, so the Mavor is targeting this base. But he needs to find and locate the, the problem... He has got the satellite. There we go. So now he sees it. There it is. There's the threat. Mavor needs to go after it immediately. Super Nukes now reaching the main base. There are seven anti nukes loaded at current reading. Mavor and three Dukes. Only the Mavor can reach. Experimental Strategic nuke launch launcher. Detected. Interestingly enough, though, I mean, we're talking about the inbound pressure, which is a problem. Support commanders taking fire, but they are spamming up SAM sites in a rather awkward place. Oh, but a monkey lord will sort of pull this out. Monkey lord and defensive support commanders on the site. Oh, he's got it. He's got it. The Yolana Os is down. What a wonderful explosion that is. And he has kept the Mavor. That is huge. Finally, says Ned Bark in Team 1 Ally Chat from Beyond the Grave. Oh my god, there are still three support commanders down here. The Rambo preset, those pesky Seraphim support commanders with their overcharged capabilities, obviously just tore through that Monkey Lord. But the strats surely will be able to chew through these comms before too long. Two crabs up the center, but they're running into a massive Ravager installation. But still, the second one is very healthy indeed. The lead one taking lots of damage very quickly. There's also a Monkey Lord coming up from the south. This is interesting. Latrot might actually be in with a chance here. He needs to sort this out. He's managed to take out the support commanders over here, but he's got lots of inbound T1 and T3 spam coming out of these factories. If he can cut this off, he could expand back out in here and continue the pressure. He's got the advantage in the standoff game. As time goes on, this is just going to be a no-go zone. In fact, we've even got a monkey lord just tidying things up here down the bottom left-hand corner. And then, of course, he's got the Mavor, which can reach anywhere. Oh, ads! Just misses a Mavor shell, but there are now two Novak satellites circling overhead. I cannot believe the ending to this, how close this is. But we do have some penetration here from Super Admin's Cybern Experimentals. One Monkey Lord about to go down. But again, a very healthy megalith coming in behind it. 
All of the Ravagers have been destroyed. He needs to get more up and running. If he can hold this off on the ground, he's in with a chance. Ugh. More Seraphim support commanders leaking in through the front line. Monkey Lord in from the side. That'll definitely help. Fortunately for him, adds his attention is elsewhere at the current time. He's bagged two of those support commanders. And Megalith still alive, but being chased now from behind by a Monkey Lord. Oh my goodness. But the situation just keeps getting worse. Two GCs and a Monkey Lord and just a horde of spam coming up through the center. Oh, but a Scathis? Are you kidding me? So that's where all of the eco is going. Okay, I like the fact that you have the big toys, but you really need to start funneling resources into some experimental production. You've got to stem the tide. If he can kill off all of this, he might be in with a chance. But that's a lot of inbound pressure coming right up the center. Scathis is primed. Oh, wow, that's dangerous. Adds picking up his comm on board a transport and moving out. There is a new little secret shielded station going up at the bottom. We've got a stealth gen. Sneck. And now adds holding up in the bottom right hand corner. But this is looking critical now. That's three very healthy experimentals almost at the main base. Latrot in situ with his comm. He does have a very large bank of Ravagers in this main base. And he's got that Megalith to soak up damage up front. Colossus shedding hit points. Like he's got Deli Belly on a trip out east. Next up, Monkey Lord inbound. His turn to get shredded. Can he finish off the Megalith? Not quite, but he's done critical damage to it. It's about to go down. GC almost at the edge of the shield, but that has been severely damaged. Wow, Strap Armor 2 in over the top. Does huge amounts of damage, and it's going to survive that attack at least, but there's another wave of experimentals coming. It's like a survival match, this. But the artillery has obliterated Team 2's base. They're still pulling in 1k versus 7, 800. A secret stealth base in the bottom right has been discovered. But he's got a dilemma. Does he try and go after the comms? They're just going to move again. Novak satellites aren't brilliant at breaking through. Nice group of whalers out to defend. Strap bombers supplementing that air-based firepower. Down goes the Monkey Lord. Wow, I cannot believe what I'm seeing here. Is this going to be the comeback of the century? Super Admin has teleported over here. He's actually got Telemazer. He's teleported over here. He's got a... Perimeter monitoring station up, a stealth gen, attack missile launcher. And he's going for more attack missile batteries. Teleporter cancelled, so who else has got teleporter? Sneck, I think, has teleporter. He's evacuing his commander again. As the location's been rumbled. Oh, what have we got here? Com drop to the back of the base at the top. It's not the base where the artillery is located. Pity he didn't catch that with that huge ball of ASFs. If he'd been loitering further to the top, he'd have been able to shoot that down. And now he's got a major problem because these support commanders are so difficult to get rid of. He's lost. Actually, he's got a huge amount of point defense. Ignore me. Everything's fine. And it was actually the base where one piece of artillery located, the Scathis. The 
scat this? No, surely not. It is going base to base. I thought for a minute he was trying to use it defensively against the units in the centre, but no. That's a very large group of siege tanks inbound at the top. That is what the trot can see. He's got pretty good intel of all of the relevant areas. Helps, of course, having those Novak satellites. One of them targeting... Oh, he's lo has he lost one of them? Oh, no, maybe not. One of them's going after Ads, who almost eats a Mavor shell to the face. There's a second one. I think Ads might be about to go down here at 1 hour 10 minutes. Oh, a little bit of firing randomness coming into play and saving him there. Another volley out from the Novaks. Adds down to 16,000. Here comes a transport for Evac. <gasps> Just misses a Mavor shell. And I can't believe it. He's going to make his way out of the stealth base. All but destroyed in the bottom right-hand corner. Is he going to just keep that transport circling in the air? I don't know whether that's brave or foolhardy. Monkey Lord's made its way into the perimeter down here. Big old brick contingent marching through the central canyon. The Othams at the top of the screen are bearing down on that Scathis position, but they are being cut to ribbons by those whalers. It's now a decent bunch of whalers out there. Super Admin. His uh, base has been rumbled by scout planes. He's launching TAC missiles. But not really at anything too sensitive. I'm not really sure about that play. Working on Myrmidons. Ads trying to protect that transport <laughs> down the bottom right corner. This is the most absurd game. Wave of strats dispatched by Super Admin coming up the western edge of the screen. He did manage to distract the Air Force for a while, but it didn't buy him enough room. And so those ASFs are going to get to those strats before they can release their payloads. And the main base will largely survive. Maybe one or two of them will get through. Two of them have. I hear an explosion. It's only a support commander going pop. One hour and 11 minutes. Super admin picked off down here. Answers in the comment section. Apologies for missing that. Missed an awful lot in this game. It is now a 2v1. Ads doesn't have teleport capabilities. Snek is working on it, but these are not Mazer comms. Desync near the end. We won't worry too much about that. There's only three players left. The outcome could not deviate too much. This is now the Trot's game to lose. I cannot believe it. An outrageous comeback. Big old force of completely obsolete Zooey's in the center of the map about to get shredded by Whalers. Just look at this. Snek. This is the last Hail Mary chance for Team 2, 60% complete on that upgrade. And look at Team 2's eco now. 146 versus 811. They were still up over 1,100,000 mass. But that's of no use now whatsoever. The Mavor, the Dukes, and the Scathis have just bombarded Team 2 into oblivion. The Dukes working on all of that infrastructure. 
down in the bottom left over the course of the last 20 minutes. Eventually chewed up everything. Teleporter's done. He's going. Where is he going? Presumably going after Latrot. I'm not seeing an exit point. Oh. How very underwhelming. <laughs> he's jumped up here and now he's going for a gun upgrade, transferring out his uh, whatever it was. Rass that he had on board. Adds now on the ground. Cornered by an inbound brick force. There is literally no play open to them now. Ads defeated by Control K. So he is actually surrendered out of the game. There he goes. Snack, what have you got in store for us? Anything? What a wonderful, wonderful comeback by Latrot. It was like a 4v1. At the last sort of quarter of the game, at the point that he took over the reins. I must admit, when he refused to take out or refused to scout for the Yolana Oss earlier, I thought he was going to be done for. But no, not a little bit. Got his massive Mavor of Doom and just pummeled him to pieces. Look at the state of that A mass situation. <laughs> oh, there he goes. He's teleported. And it's not into the lion's den. Where is it? Teleported down to the bottom. <laughs> And off he goes again. Into the lion's den. And the ravagers open up on him. What an entertaining game. Ridiculous comeback from Latrot. Fantastic, fantastic outcome for Team 1. Uh, I just, I don't know how Team 2 managed to lose that. I really, really don't. I'm just trying to think of what possible way they could have altered the outcome. They were making good, solid strides everywhere. But, uh, yeah, I honestly, the, uh, the fact that the Mavel was allowed to go up that was probably the biggest issue that they faced. And uh, they had those massive attacks, but they just, they never really amounted to anything. I mean, would it have been different if instead of going straight after the Mavor, they drifted north to take out everything up here, including the Scathis? Would that have made a difference? Maybe... Might have uh, changed the dynamic. It would have had Latrot cornered. And then future attacks would have been brought to bear. But I don't know. That's a big if. And who in their right mind. When you've got that much firepower moving up. You've got to think that you're in with a shot of breaking through here. But there was just too much combined defensive firepower. The Ravagers once they actually reached it. But even before that. They were being harassed by gunship pressure. Certainly a uh, a solid control of the air, which they just didn't have. In fact, Team 1, specifically Latrot, was in control of all air power for at least the last, I don't know, 
15 minutes or so, it seemed. He was uh, out in front. Team 2 just gave up on it altogether. I think they got uh, a little bit of the case of the Sopcom head. And couldn't think their way through it. But still, 1 hour and 17 minutes. Absolutely redonkulous. Uh, don't forget, there is uh, a lot more content on the Patreon, as I mentioned at the beginning. And uh, it's a little bit more varied. As I say, the uh, content on the main channel has been largely focused towards the epics lately. We might see some more content coming up soon in the way of tawny coverage. I know there's been some big tawnies going on over this weekend. I'm actually I'm recording this on a Saturday. I don't know whether I'm getting out to you today or tomorrow. But uh, yeah, there's uh, a lot of tawny action going down so I'm going to pick some of the decent games I think from that so we will have some some different uh, content hopefully coming next week but if you want more of that you want it now like I say the Patreon is a mere dollar a month guys do please check it out it's the best way to support me alright that's enough of that until next time guys stay well and stay safe this is Guile signing out <laughs>